All right, welcome to today's lesson on programming structures, part one, where we're going to look at the selection structure. Now, basically, we're going to start off by reviewing some of the concepts that we've learned in grade 11, where we talk about the three basic programming structures that we covered. The first is the normal flow of the program, which is called sequence or sequential flow. And this is where code is normally executed line by line in the order that it appears. The other programming structures we have are selection, where we run one section of code or another section of code based on the comparison of two or more values. And the final basic programming structure is called repetition, and this is where we repeat a section of code over and over again one or more times based on conditions that are set. And we'll be looking at that in our next lesson. So the selection structure that we're going to cover today, again, is a point in the program where we compare two values or more, and based on how those values compare to each other, we are either going to run a section of code or we are not going to run a section of code. The comparison that we're making will always result in a Boolean result, so a true or false answer. Now there are two types of selection structures that we can run. The first is called an if statement, and the second is called a switch case statement. 90% of the time you're likely going to be using if and else if statements. However, some scenarios lend themselves more easily to a switch case statement. These would be an example of where I have an, uh, the user selecting from a number of options, so like a menu sort of selection item there. But before we can program the selection structures, we have to understand how we can perform logic comparisons. The first line of an if statement surrounded in smooth brackets will always contain your logic comparison and usually it's some sort of relational expression. In other words, it's going to be something we're going to compare if one thing is greater than, less than, or equal to another value. Sometimes, however, instead of being a relational expression, it could just be a straight-up method that returns a Boolean result and we'll see examples of this upcoming in the next couple slides. If the expression that we are looking at is true or equal to 1, we're going to execute the statements that follow it. If it's false, we do not execute the statements that are connected to it. So here's a table of the basic relational expressions we have. We've got greater than, greater than equal to, less than, less than equal to, is equal to, and not equal to. Now there's a couple of different ways we can actually use the if statement. The first is having a single case. So for example, we have the keyword if our logic expression in smooth brackets, and if that's true, we run a statement of code. So for example here, in this case I'm not using a re relational expression, instead I'm using a method that returns a Boolean value. Specifically, this front is clear method will tell me whether or not there is a wall or another such object that prevents the robot from entering the intersection it's facing. If it's true, it means that I can get into that intersection, and if it is true, then I run the code smithers.move. So this block of code here will make Smithers move forward only if there is no wall or other object in front of it that prevents its moving into that intersection. We can also do a multi-line statement, which is exactly the same as the one before, except you can see that you can run more than just one statement in that um, squiggly bracket set, in the body of that if statement there. So in this case, I've got a relational expression resulting on um, some method that runs on the object here. So Smithers, it's going to count the number of things in its backpack, and if there are more than or equal to two things, then I'm going to put down two things in the intersection I'm currently in. We can also take a look at an if-else statement. So in this case, if something is true, run these statements. However, if that original statement is not true, I want to run a separate set of statements. So in this case, again, going back to that front is clear, if there's nothing in front of me, then I want Smithers to move forward. Otherwise, if there's something in front of Smithers, I want him to turn left. And then finally, we have an if-else-if -if statement that looks like this. If some expression is true, run these statements, and then I have multiple else-if statements. I can have one or many else-if statements that checks a separate but related expression. If that separate expression is true, I run these statements, and so on, until I have the final else saying that none of the above were true, so run these statements. This is slightly different from doing a separate set of if, 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 if. It becomes a little bit more efficient to do it this way. 
Because if this first statement is true, what will happen in the execution is that we'll skip over all of these else if and else statements here and move to the end once it's finished running all the blocks of code that's related to it. However, if I was to use specific if statements, what it would do is it would check each if statement. If it's true, run it. If it's true, run it. If it's true, run it. Even if that first one's true, it's going to continue checking all the ones after it, which can use up processing time. So if your options are related to each other, you should be using the if, else if options as opposed to separate distinct if statements. So here's an example that will make Smithers the robot face north. If my direction is east, turn left. If my direction is south, turn around. If it's west, turn right. This particular clause has no else statement because the only other option would be it's already facing north, in which case I don't need to do anything. So I don't need to put the code in there for else if it's not going to do anything anyway. Now, we also have Boolean operators, which will allow us to combine more than one comparison at a time. So in this case, I can use AND, which means that if this expression is equal and this expression is true, if both of these are true, I'm going to do the following sets of code. I have OR, which means that one or the other or both of them are true, then I can execute the section sec next set of code. The caret here is going to do one or the other but not both. If both of these are true, it actually evaluates overall to a false expression and then therefore doesn't run the attached code. And then finally here we've got this um, option which is if expression 1 is true, return this variable. Otherwise if expression 1 is false, return this variable. And this is useful. It's very rare that you'll actually use this, but it's useful uh, for example in converting uh, Boolean operators into integer values or vice versa. Now the other option was our switch case statement, and this is when we have a large no number of options to choose from, specifically in like a menu type scenario. The selection is made by testing a particular integer against a number of integer constants. Once we find a match, so once it equals each other, we execute the statements for that particular match. And we continue executing statements until we reach a break statement, which will block out of that whole switch block and move to the next section of code. So here's an example of what this would look like. I have the keyword switch and then the variable or value that I'm looking to compare and then all of the different options as to what this variable could be. So it could be integer, it could be a, a 7, a 2, a 5 and so on. If it equals that value it runs these statements until it reaches the break. Default here is if none of these cases are true it will run these statements and then break. So that's what it would like, might look like in code. I'm going to switch based on the number of things in my backpack. If there are three, four, or five things, I'm going to put three things down and then break. If there are two things in my backpack, I'm going to put two things down. If there's one thing, put one thing down. Otherwise, I'm just going to turn around. It's also possible to use characters rather than integers as case labels. And now in the new version of Java, it is also possible to use strings as well. And that would look, if you're using characters, something like this, where your cases must be enclosed in single quotes. If you were to use strings, it must be enclosed in double quotes. And then finally, I'm going to leave you with a few different queries that can be used in our selection structures. You can peruse these and practice using them if you need them. And that's it for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.